Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to do the uh, rack and pinion now. So the first thing I've done is I took my bevel gear completely apart. As you can see, it's completely disassembled. However, I did leave the framework together because you're going to need that for the crank and slider. So I'm just going to leave this piece together and set it over to the side. All right, first thing you're going to need to do for the rack and pinion is you will need this uh, gear with the teeth on it. This gear right here, the flat one. You're also gonna need this called the track you'll need these two gr uh, green brackets the metal bracket that you used in the bevel gear and then there'll be several different kinds of screws that we're going to use and I'll get to those in just a minute move my bevel gear pieces out of the way and the first thing I'm going to do is take my green bracket pieces and attach them to my build plate. Uh, you want them to have you know, some space in between them. I don't know an exact number but they need to have a little bit of space. This metal bracket is going to go right between them. This track is going to snap in there and basically move back and forth and that's the rack how the rack and pinion works all right so you just want to make sure that these green pieces aren't too far away because you want the track piece to go in, into them so they can't be you know way out here on the ends and you don't want them too close so leave a few spaces in there between the metal piece and the green pieces all right so i'm gonna go uh, here looks pretty good and you'll need to, to attach these green brackets with red screws. So find some red screws. And you'll want two red screws per bracket. All right, so it looks like I don't have four red screws available, so I'm going to take two of my red screws out of this out of this piece from the bevel gear. I'm just going to take two red screws out of there, and then when I go to do the, the other mechanism that needs this piece, I'll just put those two right back in there. All right, so now I've got four red screws. Now the tricky part of this is you can't go in from the top or else the, the head of the screw will hit the bar and keep it from moving. So you have to go up from underneath. So I'm going to turn this build plate over and put the screw in from underneath. You'll probably have to push kind of hard to get it started, but it will screw into that green piece and you won't need a nut. It'll just screw directly into the green piece, but you got to push it a little bit in order to get it started. It doesn't really matter which holes you use to put these red screws in. I'm just choosing the outside holes, but honestly, it's not going to make that big of a difference. And then you want to leave them just a little bit loose. You don't want it to fall off, but you want it to be just a little bit loose so that when we get everything on there, 
we can make sure that we get this snapped in here and we want to, to we'll have to adjust these just a little bit in order to get everything in a perfectly lined up and then we'll tighten them down to get it to work just right all right so there's my first one now i'm going to put my second one in line with it uh, about here Looks like I wasn't careful enough. I didn't get everything lined up just right. So I was one row off. I have to redo this real quick. Okay, and again, I'm gonna leave these just a little bit loose so that I can adjust that later on to get everything per uh, lined up perfectly straight. All right, so now, as I said, this bracket is gonna go in between them, but in order to make things easier, I'm gonna put my uh, bushings and my gear on here. Oh, wait a second, let me think. No, I wanna attach this first, and then I wanna put my bushings and my gear on. So I'm gonna attach this with blue screws let's see here so I'm just I just put that in the middle like so and then I'm gonna put a blue screw through there like that and you'll want two screws And then for these, you will need to put the hex nut on the bottom. And again, I'm going to leave this one just a little bit loose so that I can get everything lined up later on. Okay, next step. You're going to use the smallest gear, not the bevel gear, but the smallest regular uh, straight gear from the gear train with idler. Okay, we're going to want two bushings, and they're going to go in the top row. Yep, they're going to go in the top row there. Now with bushings, you always use green screws. Okay, so I got my bushing on there. Now I'm gonna put a bushing on this side.
All right, now these won't need to be adjusted later on, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure those are good and tight. Okay, next I'm gonna take this axle and this gear, and then you're going to need some collars also so that the gear doesn't slide back and forth. So I'm gonna put the axle through here, and then I'm gonna put the collar on here. Then the gear, then another collar. And this is the tricky one. There. All right. So you can see, it can still slide back and forth a little bit, which is fine for right now. But now I want to put the rack right here in the middle of this. Now this one, you're gonna to have to use some screws that you haven't used yet. You're going to want two of these really, really small yellow screws. And they're going to go in from underneath. And you need to use the skinny hex driver, the long skinny hex driver to put them in. All right, so I got that one pretty good and tight. Now I'm just gonna slide it here, through here, through this green bracket, just like that. And once I've got it to where it moves really well, then I wanna go back and lock in all those screws that were underneath, now that I've got it in a good straight line. Slide that out so I can get this tightened down. And actually, I can see that I moved that a little bit, so I'll put it back through here. There we go. And I'm just going to tighten this one from underneath using my fingers. So just. Get it as tight as you can with your fingers. That one's really hard to get to. Usually in class we have a pair of pliers that you can borrow that'll make it a lot easier, but I obviously couldn't send home pliers with everybody. And there you have it. So the next thing I need to do is get this locked in place with the collars. So I have a couple collars on the inside of my bracket to lock the gear in place. So 
so those locked the gear, but as you can see, the axle still moves. So I'm gonna put another collar on here. And now I've got no side to side movement at all. Can't go anywhere. Everything's locked down in place. And when you turn this, it makes the rack slide. And if you move this, it makes the gear slide. So if you've ever heard of rack and pinion steering in a car, that's the most common place to see it. So this would be the steering wheel, it'd be attached right here. And then inside your car, your wheels would be attached here. And that's how it would make the wheels turn. That's the rack and pinion steering. Now one thing you might have to do, you might have to press down on this a little bit in order to get everything to move just right. And if you have to press down on that, that's okay. Uh, it's not a big deal. I have to press down on mine, but some of these brackets here are just not made quite right, quite perfect, and so you have to give it a little bit of push. But if you take your handle, put it on here, see now it's, it's skipping, it's not moving the rack at all. But if I push down, then the rack moves. And that's what I was talking about, is you might have to push down on your gear to get the rack to move just right. Because um, these brackets just aren't made perfect. I'll show you a better picture from further away. There we go. So I do have to push down on my gear just a little bit in order to get it to move. But, there it is. That's your rack and pinion.